okay, I also want to share some thoughts on the maker movement, um, and I promise you a quite uh, provocative statement, but before I get started, uh, I would like to briefly introduce myself. Um, I'm running a consultancy in Berlin and Munich. Uh, we do a lot of service design, user experience design. We actually do a lot of teaching uh, at different universities. I'm also a professor in the university in Potsdam. And uh, I really like our area because we constantly uh, have to do research to understand what's going on. So we are a bunch of people, uh, most, uh, what is nice, a third are engineers and two thirds are designers, a little bit of our clients. But what I want to introduce today is a project we did uh, ourselves. We invented Fritzing, which is, a, which is a whole community around being able to, or empowering people to work creatively with electronics. Um, we heard the talk of Massimo Banzi, it's basically based on what Massimo Banzi did. It is based on people being able to, to create new use cases with electronics, with sensors, with actuators. I mean, we saw a lot of things, Massimo showed them and other speakers. Uh, people are building toys, people are building sensors for their cats, for their house. We hear a lot uh, of new interfaces for, for example, in the musical community, DJs are building their own tools. And what, uh, what we try to do is to give these people access from the level that they build one prototype, as you can see, for example, in the center of this picture, to really a product. So our, our, catching, our catch line, our, our motto is from prototype to product. So we built basically in a research project a couple of years ago, six years ago, we built an open source software which allows you to basically copy the thing you just built by your hands into software. So you can document it in the language you are familiar with. So you build hands-on with the Arduino board, with a breadboard and something, something magic is happening and now you can copy it without learning an extra language. And the next step is this view, we call it the breadboard view, is also translated into the engineering view, the schematic view. So you have now the same circuit, the same project you just made, but it's in a language where you can talk to engineers. And to be honest, talking to engineers is not always fun. Uh, it is, as a designer especially, it is sometimes really tough. Especially when you have something like this and you say, look, it's running and the engineers has to start from scratch and say it will be very expensive to redo it and it will take a lot of time. And, and so it's nice to have now a common language so that you can at least communicate what you're doing and if there's something not working, you can ask. When something can be optimized, you can ask. And so you have these two languages uh, which are in, under one software. And the third language is the production language. So you also see the same circuit as a PCB. PCBs are the core of hardware electronics. Everything is a PCB, and PCBs are wonderful. PCBs can be produced wherever you are in the world. You will get exactly the same PCB. I think PCB production is really the most globalized manufacturing process around. PCBs, once you have a PCB, the hardware actually can hardly break. I mean, uh, electronics run forever, more or less. There, there is no mechanical part, they're really robust. This is really, the soldering is such a strong combination. So you can do it and you can mass produce it. So we, we, tried with, we are trying with our software to give these creative people a tool to actually go into PCB production and people produce. So we, we are help, you can use either the file and then go to a known PCB production or you can do it through Fritzing. And we have really amazing stories of people coming there and producing stuff. I mean, one of, I, I also want to add a story. Uh, one of the favorite stories I had, uh, we had a guy coming. He actually called, well, I want to produce some PCBs. Can I pick them up personally and can I pay cash? We said, well, yes. And then it turned out it was a guy who runs um, these, these, these coin-operated porn booths. And he wanted to increase the number of channels you can watch. And he built it all by himself and well, he paid it cash as said. But I was really impressed that, that, that this maker community is far just 
going into real daily life uh, challenges and not staying within the artist and designers community. And so through this tool, basically, people are able to, to, to produce their own PCBs, which was actually, when we started, unthinkable. People, engineers, friend of mine, would say, this is impossible, a non-engineer cannot produce his own PCB. And so now we have this language, now we have the access to production, uh, the next step is, um, I, I skipped this slide just to mention this fritzing, so, uh, the visuals, we, we put a lot of effort into, the, into these kind of, um, it, especially into this view, because we knew it would be used by a lot of designers and, and it had to be really right and, and working fine. And it has been used a lot in books, so it's ideal for learning. But I wanted to go to the next step, with a language and with access to production, you can share. And sharing is a big, big part of the maker movement, that you don't start from scratch. Education, learning in, share in this new way, in this new DIY way of dealing with high tech is based on copying somebody else's solution and repurposing it for new context. And it's really great, we have this project gallery on our website, and Hundreds and thousands of people are providing their little circuits. They found out how to use a certain chip. They designed an interesting toy. Uh, they have a nice algorithm to save energy. And so they share it. And you can just take it, copy it into your own circuit, and you reuse it. And I mean, when you look at the software, and when you look at web, that's exactly how things happened. I mean, uh, any browser up to today has the feature uh, show source code because you can look up the source code of any web page to understand how it's organized and how it's working. It's getting a little bit more complicated these days, but I think the foundation of having things open and shareable is really, really important. So, this was a little bit my background. Now I want to provoke. And actually, I want to take a, a complete opposite uh, position than what we heard uh, in the two speakers before me. I really think the make movement and uh, the, ex the, the, the whole things around 3D printing and access to electronics and the Internet of Things, etc., made a great, great, had a great impact on our society. It, it empowered hobbyists. It empowered a lot of people to deal with these very, very complicated technologies. And I think it's an important part to be a, a citizen to understand what the technology around you is actually doing, to be able to, 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 to recognize the magic, but to still understand what is actually happening there. And to also understand the limitations because once you understand how a computer works, you're a little less afraid of what it really can do. Or maybe you're even more afraid, I don't know. Um, the next thing is, as said, it empowered the hobbyists, the normal, the normal people. The, we call them always the non-engineers. But, and this is a little bit my observation, the empowerment ends at the prototype level or at the unique, at the unique specimen, the Einzelstück. It ends there. You, can, you are able to do your skateboard nicer. You are able to build for your cat uh, a new, a new uh, feeding environment. Uh, you are able maybe to hook up your house to the internet, etc. But I have the feeling that, that this is not enough. We are not going all the way as we are seeing it in other technical areas. I really think the make movement has to, sorry, the make movement has to empower each of us to be able to launch products. And I know this is a really big challenge because if you look around, I mean, if you look at the Mobile World Congress, it's still the same large and, and multinational companies who are launching new hardware. It's really, I mean, of course, we see more and more through Kickstarter happening there, but it's not true to say that we are empowering every single person to launch a product. You see a little bit of Etsy doing their, their home uh, knitting and interesting new designs with laser cutter, etc. But really, um, the way from an idea in the Internet of Things or with new hardware to a product is still very, very complicated. And it's complicated due to a lot of reasons. It's not only the tools. It is also political reasons. It is also, of course, a, a lot of knowledge involved. But I have the feeling when you look at app, at the revolution of apps, I mean, 
not anybody, I don't want to go so far to say that anybody could build an app, but it's really, really easy to sit down and design and program your own app. And I really think we have to go in the make field, so hardware, laser cutter, etc. We have to go that way that people are not only empowered to do their own one of a kind product, but really to be able to launch products. Thank you. That's uh, my stake on it.